Of course, no new GeForce launch would be complete without some 3D vision coverage, so what I'll be focusing on here is the GTX 670 versus its predecessor, 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 the 570, as well as versus its big brother, the GTX 680. So I'll just be looking at in a couple of games, I'm not going to go too deep into the games on this one, so we're just going to do Crisis 2 as well as Skyrim. In a couple games, which one delivers the best 3D experience? I'll be using all the same settings that I used for my regular 1080p performance review, which means I'm running all of these games pretty much maxed out. And uh, so yeah, you see the end of my Crisis 2 run through there. I clearly died because I couldn't really do anything without the glasses on. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. I'll show you guys the performance results as well as, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just performance results. For this stereoscopic 3D performance evaluation, I'll be using uh, the same test bench I'm using for my regular review, which is a Gigabyte X79 UD7. So that's a uh, up to four-way SLI capable motherboard. I've got a 3930K overclocked to four gigahertz for my CPU. That's a six core processor with hyper-threading, 16 gigs of Kingston 1600 megahertz RAM, and a Kronos SSD, uh, a Kronos Deluxe SSD for my boot drive. And then obviously I'll have a variety of different video cards and the H100 keeps the CPU nice and cool at that overclock. So for Skyrim, I'm doing my usual run through. So I didn't show this in the 1080p performance review, so I might as well show it now. So basically I just take a walk around the town. I go over to the end of there. I stare at that fire for a little bit over there. And then I walk over here and I come up here and around here and, you know, looking off into the distance a fair bit. Uh, I stare at uh, these two guards a little bit just to make a point of uh, looking at a couple of character models. And that is how I evaluate Skyrim. Yes, I know this is a bit of an ideal scenario and there's not too much in terms of particle effects or tons of characters on the screen, but it does give me reproducible results that I can easily compare from one card to another. So it gives us an idea of how they perform relative to each other. So as you guys will see in a moment when I show you the graph that's on the screen right over there, the GTX 670 just destroys the 570. It's the card that it's replacing in 3D gaming performance. So Crisis 2 is a great game to test in 3D because it's pretty much designed from the ground up for it. There's very little performance um, hit for enabling 3D. Sorry guys, I'm a little slow, it's sort of late. Um, there's very little performance hit for enabling 3D. It's a great title to play in 3D other than, you know, a little bit of uh, weirdness around the gun. It just looks fantastic. So you can see here the GTX 670 is just barely slower than its big brother, the 680. This card is um, just, yeah, it's uncharacteristically close to the very, very high-end card in spite of the uh, significant difference in price. And I'm sorry, the I forgot to fix these labels, but this is min FPS and this is max FPS, if you guys weren't already aware. So you can see the min FPS, that's where you're really going to see the big difference between the 670 and the 570, because this is about a 50% improvement in minimum frames per second, which translates to a very tangible, um, tangibly better experience when you're playing in 3D. The Witcher 2 gives us some very telling stats, because you can see how... Kepler has been significantly beefed up compared to Fermi in terms of its stereo 3D performance, even in titles that aren't, you know, sort of 3D from the get-go when, uh, when the game developer was designing it. So you see this, the GTX 680, so even if the 670 was about 10% slower at 31 minimum and, you know, 44 max uh, average FPS, that is still a 3x plus, almost a 4x improvement over the GTX 570 in terms of the minimum frame rates. So I ran into the same weirdness with Witcher 2 where the GTX 670 outperformed the 680 that I did it when I wasn't running in 3D and my hypothesis at this time is that because I'm using a newer driver revision that is not yet compatible with the 680 so I had to use two different drivers that there are some Witcher 2 performance improvements to be had and we're going to see this number get boosted up in the near future as well. So thank you for checking out my 3D performance overview. I know I only did a couple games but the general idea was I just wanted to see how does it compare against the previous generation in terms of 3D performance and the answer is very favorably and how how close can it be to its big brother? And the answer is very, very, very close, which was true when we weren't running in 3D and is also true when we are running in 3D. So thank you for checking out this 3D performance review of the GTX 670 from NVIDIA. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.